नमस्कार आई एम रोमा रेड्डी वेलकम टू केव एस न्यूज टूडेज हेडलाइंस इसरो प्लान टू सेंड इंडियन एस्ट्रोनॉट्स टू द मून बाई ट्वेंटी फोर्टी Tata Group plans to build largest iPhone assembly plant. Defence Ministry sealed deal with BEL for electronic fuses for the Indian Army. S&P Global Ratings predicts that India will become the world's largest economy by 2030. ISRO plans to send Indian astronauts to the moon by 2040. After the historic success of its Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission, ISRO is going full throttle with its plans to send Indian astronauts for the first time on the moon by 2040. Four test pilots from the Indian Air Force have been selected as astronaut designates for the mission. ISRO Chief S. Somanath has said, "Currently, they are undergoing mission-specific training at Astronaut Training Facility ATF in Bangalore. The inaugural manned space mission Gangayaan involves developing critical technologies, including a human-rated launch vehicle (HLVM3). an orbital module comprising a crew module cm and service module sm and life support system two identical uncrewed missions g1 and g2 beside integrate a drop test pad abort test and test vehicle flights will precede the manned mission cm is a habitable space with an earth like environment in space for the crew is designed for safe reentry Safety measures also include a crew escape system (CES) for emergencies. S&P Global Ratings predicts that India will become the third largest economy by 2030, and the country's GDP is likely to grow from 6.4% in 2023 to 7% in 2026. A report released by S&P Global India is currently the fifth largest economy in the world behind the US, China, Germany and Japan. According to the Global Credit Outlook 2024 by S&P, India is projected to be the fastest growing and emerging market globally. However, the critical challenge lies in determining whether the country can successfully evolve into the next major global manufacturing hub. The report further highlighted that India's growth is projected to be 6.4% in the fiscal year 2023-2024. Tata Group plans to build one of India's biggest iPhone assembly plants. Tapping Apple Inc ambitions to increase manufacturing in the South Asian country. Tata wants to construct the factory in Hosur in the southern Tamil Nadu state. The facility will likely have about 20 assembly lines and employ 50,000 workers within 2 years. The goal is for the site to be operational in 12 to 18 months. The plan would bolster Apple's efforts to localize its supply chain and strengthen its partnership with Tata. which already has an iPhone factory it acquired from Western Corp in neighboring Karnataka state Apple is diversifying its operations away from China by working with assembly and component manufacturing partners in India Thailand Malaysia and elsewhere Tata has accelerated hiring at its existing facility in Hosur where it produces iPhone enclosures or metal casing Tata has also said it will launch 100 retail stores focused on Apple products for its part Apple has opened two stores in the nation and is planning three more External Affairs Minister S Jayashankar has once again lauded India Russia relations amid war in Ukraine Speaking at the 8th Global Technology Summit External Affairs Minister Jayashankar said we have a relationship with Russia and it is not a relationship which happened in an instant It is a relationship of close to 60 years. His comments at a technology conclave came against the backdrop of increasing disquiet among the western powers over the strong India Russia this notwithstanding the war in Ukraine. S. Jayashankar also referred to historical aspects of the engagement between the India and Russia. Commenting on Russia's ties with the world due to the ongoing war in Ukraine Jayashankar said I think as a consequence of what is going on in Ukraine it seems to be clear that in many ways Russia's relationship with the west has broken up and in that case it's logical that Russia focuses more in asian side of Russia though historically Russia has always seen 
itself as a European power. Defence Ministry sealed deal with BEL for electronic fuses for the Indian Army. The Defence Ministry sealed an over rupees 5,300 crore deal with state-run Bharat Electronics Limited (BEL) for procurement of electronic fuses for the Indian Army for a period of 10 years. An electronic fuse is an integral component of medium to heavy calibre artillery guns, which provide sustained artillery firepower for military operation. The ministry said the fuses are being procured for usage in artillery guns which are capable of lethal engagements in various kinds of terrain including high altitude areas along the northern waters. It said the aim of the project is to build up ammunition stocks to minimize imports. It said the aim of the project is to achieve self-sufficiency in ammunition, manufacturing, obtain critical technologies and secure stock affected by supply chain disruption. The electronic fuses will be manufactured by the BEL at its Pune and upcoming Nagpur plant. Tatvik Shirag gets Khel Ratna, Shami and 25 others gets Arjuna Award for National Sports Award 2023. India star badminton duo of Shirag Shetty and Satvik Sai Raj Ranki Reddy were confirmed as the recipients of the Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award as the Sports Ministry. The Arjuna Award was confirmed for 26 sports persons including India Pacer, Muhammad Shami and the Archer's Breakout Star of 2023, Aditi Gopi Chand Swami. The Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports informed in a press release that the athletes will receive their awards from the President of India, Draupadi Murmu, at Rashtrapati Bhavan on 9th January 2024. Chirag and Satwik had a memorable 2023 as they won the Asian Games gold medal, the Asian Championships title, and the prestigious Indonesia Open Super 1000 title. Among Arjuna Award winners, Pacer Shami had a spectacular run in the ODI World Cup, where India finished runners-up, losing to Australia in the final. Shami was the leading wicket-taker in the World Cup, with 24 wickets, despite missing the first few matches in the tournament. In the process, he also became India's leading wicket-taker in the tournament's history. Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioner's Bill 2023 has been passed by Rajya Sabha. The Union government has made some significant changes to the Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioner's Bill 2023. The bill passed by Rajya Sabha. The bill was passed in the upper house of parliament amid a uproar by the opposition party who staged the walkout. The apex court in March this year heard the petition seeking a collegium-like system to appoint the chief election commissioner and election commissioners in its order. The Supreme Court directed the government to set up a panel including the Prime Minister, the Chief Justice of India and the opposition leader for the appointment of the country's key election officers. The government proposed some amendments to the bill, which repealed the Election Commission Act 1991 to provide for the appointment process and conditions of service. Chief Election Commissioner, CEC and two election commissioners. Thousand students from various IITs will present their projects in 13 competitions of Inter IIT Tech Min 2020. IIT Madras gears up to host the 12th edition of the Inter IIT Tech Min, a flagship event. From December 19 to 22, 2023. This will be the first fully offline Tech Min since the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, the event is expected to witness a footfall of nearly 1,000 students across the IITs. This will be participating in 13 competitions ranging from product management, quantum computing, game development, mathematics and cyber security. The inter IT Tech Meet will also feature events that are the part of Vixit Bharat at 2047 nationwide campaign. The Inter-IT Tech Meet is an annual pan-IIT 
competition. Set to test the technical skills of IIT students in solving real world problems which can impact millions of lives. This highly competitive event puts some of the best minds in the country up against one another as they solve challenging issues based in the real world of robotics, artificial intelligence, finance and many other fields for two months. Finally culminating in offline meet. As host, IIT Madras is responsible for coming up with industrial problem statements that the students will be solving and also providing them a platform to interact with peers, industrial experts and professors through networking events and project showcases. India has initiated its inaugural winter expedition to the Arctic to understand global climate, sea level and biodiversity. Earth Science Minister Kiran Rijiju flagged off India's first winter scientific expedition to the Arctic. A team of four scientists will embark on this maiden winter journey aiming to conduct atmospheric observations during the polar nights, study parallel changes and monitor variations in sea ice. Their work is expected to provide valuable insights into the complex interactions between the Arctic climate and Indian monsoon system, as well as contribute to the broader understanding of global warming effects. The Imadri Research Station in Norway will serve as the base for year-round observations, enhancing the efficiency and scope of India's research capabilities in the region. The expedition also aligned with India's Arctic policy which emphasizes scientific cooperation, environmental protection, and sustainable development in the rapidly transforming Arctic landscape. Thank you for watching KOS News. Stay tuned for more updates.